Hi, this is Sean B. Bradley. I'm here at the Neil Huffman Nissan Internet Training. What I want to do is I want to go over what the job responsibilities are for Internet Coordinator. A coordinator is an appointment setter. Again, your main role, let's just talk about the Internet side of these because there's actually two roles, to be honest with you. There's the Internet side and there's the incoming phone up side. Yes? Yes. yes. Camera's on me, so you'd be loud, so you can hear you, okay? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Thank you. I love it. All right, so <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. All right, so for the internet customer, it's the outbound phone call. The primary focus is to secure an appointment. If you cannot secure an appointment, you're supposed to gather as much information as possible and set up for a quality TL. I'll elaborate as we go a little bit further in, but it's appointment, and if you can't make an appointment, set up for a quality TL. Understood? Yes. yes. Okay, good. All right, good. Learned you something. All right, now, for an incoming phone call, it's a little bit different. So, coordinators, start taking notes here. You have a video, but take notes. On an incoming phone up perspective, it's a little bit different. Your number one goal is to gather information. That's the big difference. It's to gather information because an incoming phone up, normally, you don't have any information. Maybe, if you're lucky, you might have caller ID. Other than that, you don't know who they are, where they're calling from, what's the number, what are they interested in, what are their wants, wishes, expectations. On the flip side, which I just talked about, is the internet prospect. You have an internet lead from Auto by Tell that has the vehicle, color, options, details, and what they want. Yes? Yes. yes. Oh, I love it. There you go. All right, good. Who the hell has been drinking my rock stars? <laughs> All right? So, again, outbound internet, you're looking for appointment or to set up a quality TO. An inbound phone up, your number one goal is to gather the proper information. What information? Let's be specific. The name, the phone number, possibly email address, what type of vehicle they're looking for. Why? Because you want to be able to log the phone up for trackability purposes. Nobody wants to make a phone friend that never shows up for the, for the appointment or the deal, right? right? All right, so now, if you get that information, what's the next thing? Then it's like a traditional coordinator. After you gather the information, then the next rule of engagement is to try to set the appointment. If you can't set the appointment, set the TO. So the only difference of an inbound or outbound is on the inbound, your first protocol is to gather information. That's the only thing. Now, Joe, we started talking about what additional things do we want the coordinators to do. Can we put it up here? Now, if you look at it, you want them to do the three-minute books. The three-minute books are a daily, without exception, without fail, um, way that we keep everybody on focus, a chiropractic alignment. It's, um, it basically discusses the, the reasons why they're here from the laws of attraction manifestation. It talks about the, the pay plan, how they're going to make the money, what they need to do, their actual roadmap, and it also gives you the scorecard, the today and month-to-date data. So the three-minute books set daily goals role playing, and then we've got it right here, what they're supposed to do. Work on your fresh leads, your responses, the 30 days with a verbal contact, 30 days with no verbal contact, 32 to 90 days you know, post follow-up, and then start over, let's do it again. And at the end of the day, they gotta fill out the, and send their scorecards. So that's what their standard operating procedure from the beginning to end of the day is, but what other responsibilities, rhetorical, I'll answer, what other responsibilities do we want coordinators to do? Okay, besides that, we want them to study product knowledge. At this store, since we're at Nissan, we're going to talk about Nissan, they should be, in my opinion, product certified. Now, do they need to be on the same constraints as a traditional sales consultant? Absolutely not. I don't care if it takes them six months to get fully certified, but eventually I would love for you to be able to look at all, one, all of your coordinators and know that they are Nissan product certified. That would be unbelievable. Now. I'm going to switch in a second to the sales consultants, but what they should do is they should be working with the sales consultants. They should be going on demo drives occasionally, go to fill up gas so they get to feel what it's like to drive the vehicles. They should have some type of perspective, and they're going to talk about an armada. They should know what it's like to sit in an armada, hear the engine go, be able to do that stuff. Now, Ashley, you were talking about the golf clubs in whatever vehicle that was. I love that. You should have you know, product presentations, demo drives, not every single day, but this is what they should be working towards. What to do to fill their day. They should be working on the product knowledge, just not, not only the OEM certification knowledge, but just go through the, the drilling, you know what I mean, of, of the vehicle, do a walk around. Now, do I think that they should be held accountable to walk the lot every day? Absolutely not. But once in a while, should they turn around and, and understand where the used cars are and how that this is a Nissan store, but we have Toyotas and we've got Nissan, I mean, besides Nissans, we've got Hondas, we've got, you know, Kias, we've got all sorts of stuff that might be on stock. Explain that to them. What other stuff should they do? 
they should know, oh my God, they should know and master your value package proposition. Can you just pull it back there? This is huge. Identify, meet, and exceed your customer expectation. There's a reason why. Look at those itty bitty, you know, uh, banners over there, and that one's really big. Because that shows you that that's what we should be focusing on, is identifying, meeting, and exceeding customer expectations through or with the value package proposition. What is different and better about this organization? You need to know your value package inside and out. You need to understand for price, availability, convenience, I hate car salesmen, and research. The top five reasons why people are going online, you need to have three, four, five, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirty, I don't really care. Different things to say for the top five reasons why people are going online. You also need to know for military, law enforcement, for senior citizens, first time buyers, everything we talked about this morning, you should know why they should buy here. You should be able to go on and on, almost like ad lib. You ever see whose line is it anyway? Or you ever see somebody ad lib? You should turn around and Brian be able to go, mm, right here, for first time buyers. And you should be able to spit out why this is the most incredible place to buy for a first time buyer. Um, okay, new family. Okay, and you should be able to spit out why, if you're having a baby, this is the best place to buy a vehicle. Uh, if you're a senior citizen, why this is the best place to buy. That's what you should be drilling, role playing, drilling, role playing, drilling, role playing. I mean, until it's just natural, 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 reflexive, like water, it's fluid. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. yes. Oh, you lost the rock star. Yes! Yes! yes. There you go. So, now, oh. I was kidding, by the way. So, besides all this stuff, you should be researching your competitors. What are the other Nissan dealerships offering? What are their value package propositions? What are they telling people on their websites? If you mystery shop them, what are they saying to their people? Now, what about for Toyota? What about for Kia? What about for Hyundai? What about for Honda? What are their value packages? What else should you know? You should know what are the awards that Nissan, because it's all about Nissan for right now, so what awards have Nissan won from Motor Trend, JD Power and Associates, Car and Driver, any of that stuff, what have they won? You know, what, what are they, the National Traffic Safety Highway Authority, whatever it is, you know, what do they win? You should know why to validate, add credence, add you know confirmation that your prospects are on the right you know vehicle. They made the best choice possible, and we identified today. We learned that by Auto by Tell. Auto by Tell says that the number one least expensive sedan is the Nissan Versa. You should know all your lead source providers, whether it's Edmunds.com, Kelly Blue Book, uh, Auto by Tell, Auto Trader, Cars.com. Cars Direct, what do these lead source providers, especially if you're paying for them, especially if you're subscribed to them, especially if you're the Auto Buy Tell certified dealer, you need to know what your product is doing in their eyes and where you stand. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, so besides that, what other stuff can you...